Bad coolant sensors are responsible for poor warm starts, engine overheating, and poor fuel economy. In this video, let's learn about the four coolant temperature sensors, what they do, and how to diagnose them to keep your car operating at its best. The four temperature sensors are all in this little section here, but their lo location may vary slightly on other R129s, W124s, and W201s. There are a few modifications that are possible for each of these sensors and I'll explain each throughout the video. At the end of the video I have a bonus section that answers the most common question on engine temperature. All these sensors in one form or another are measuring the temperature of the coolant and then use the temperature information to control and inform other functions of the car. So let's start with this sensor here first. I'm holding a thermostat. Every car has a thermostat. Its main function is to keep the engine temperature as close to operating temperature as possible. And in doing so, keeps the engine operating as efficiently as possible. Engines operate most efficiently when they are within the car's operating temperature, which is 85 degrees Celsius. As the name suggests, the purpose of the coolant is to keep the engine cool. The thermostat is located inside what's called the thermostat housing, and for this car, it's here. When the engine is cold, this thermostat is in the off position. See the spring here? It keeps the coolant limited to only flow around the engine block, and it doesn't go through the radiator, which allows the engine to get to operating temperature much more quickly. As mentioned, Engines operate most efficiently at about the 85 degrees Celsius, which is the operating temperature. If the temperature gets over 85 degrees Celsius, then this thermostat opens and allows the hot coolant to enter the radiator to cool itself. And then the cooler coolant is sent back to the engine to keep the engine cool. And then the coolant itself gets warmer and this cycle continues on and on. So the thermostat effectively tries to maintain the car's operating temperature by controlling when the coolant should be cooled by the radiator. The Mercedes were all originally equipped with an 87 degrees thermostat. So between 85 and 90, it begins to open and allow circulation from the engine to the radiator. But it's not completely open at those temperatures, just a bit of it. At about 100 degrees Celsius, it completely opens and allows the coolant to freely flow from engine to radiator, radiator to engine, engine to radiator, and so on. So you could imagine if this thermostat is broken and sometimes they fault in the closed position or remain partially open, your engine will overheat. This can lead to engine failure. On the flip side, if it's always open, it will mean that your car won't run optimally. It doesn't run optimally because in the open position, it will take the car longer to get to operating temperature at initial startup. One thing I should note is that if it stays open all the time, you won't get catastrophic engine damage than if it was always stuck in the closed position. So these things do fail. So how do you know if the thermostat is working properly? If it's in the closed position, and that's when the engine is still cool, then if you feel the upper radiator hose, which is this hose, it's the upper radiator hose, it will be cold. But after a short drive, if it's still cool, then you have a problem because after a drive, it should get warm. You can also test it by idling the car and keeping your hand here for a few minutes. And once it reaches 85 to 90 degrees Celsius, you will feel an immediate rush of coolant and it will get hot fairly quickly. You can modify this sensor. Earlier, I mentioned that the original specs have an 87 degrees Celsius sensor. You can go with a sensor as low as 80 degrees Celsius, and this should keep your car's engine cooler for longer. But if there is an underlying problem with your car's cooling system, likely, limit, likely because of a limited flow in your radiator, then getting a lower temperature sensor only slightly delays the car from overheating. It certainly helps, but it's far from perfect and won't solve your overheating problem. Further, some sensors even have a fail safe where they will never get stuck in the closed position. Remember the closed position is where you could get catastrophic engine damage. Something to think about if you're replacing these. Mercedes branded thermostats won't have this fail safe 
and most of them are at 85 degrees Celsius. So you got to go off brand or off Mercedes, but there are a number of good quality thermostat makers in the world. This particular sensor called the CTS, like its counterparts, it measures the coolant temperature. This sensor is most applicable to the Mercedes with the KE Jetronic Bosch system. It's located right here, very close to the thermostat. Its primary function is to send the temperature data to the car's computer, which in turn regulates the fuel flow on warm-up. The sensor has four pins, as you can see here, and sends two signals, one to the ignition module, located here, and another to the car's computer, the ECU, located in that corner there. For instance, when the coolant temperature is cold, as during a cold start, the sensor signals the ignition module to optimize engine timing during startup. Simultaneously, it informs the ECU to increase the fuel injection to the fuel injectors and activate the cold starts located a little bit behind there. However, if the engine is already warm, a different fuel mixture is required and the cold start valve can be bypassed. And this sensor makes that bypass happen. This explanation oversimplifies the process as additional steps involves the EHA valve, fuel pumps, and other related mechanical functions. A malfunctioning sensor leads to problems with cold starts, sometimes suboptimal warm starts, overall diminished performance, and reduced fuel efficiency. Poor gas mileage occurs due to the computer unnecessarily enriching the fuel mixture. This happens when the sensor is faulty and sends a temperature that is lower than the actual temperature. In extreme cases, you will be able to smell rich exhaust. It's very easy to test this part with a multimeter. Multimeter would be on ohms, and you want to go up to 20,000K or 20K. You can see the readings on the screen. While the sensor is on the car, that's how you need to measure it. Now, you can sort of see it's got a little bit of a clip there. And then you're going to try to wiggle it out. Like that, and then with the four pins there, you could see it. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how to do this you know, on the bench, but you're going to need to keep this in here. Somehow get your multimeter in there. Things will be really hot depending on the, the temperature of the car. The temperature here is about 10 degrees Celsius. So you're going to measure cross diagonal. Remember, one signal, cross diagonal, goes to the EZL. One signal goes to the car's computer. We should both be reading roughly the same. So you can sort of see there. Yeah, it's about 11 degrees in here, and it's 3100. All right, now we're going to kind of try the other way. I don't know which I don't know which one is which, like where it goes to the EZL, which one goes to the computer, but you kind of get to roughly the same kind of reading, and you roughly do 3,000. Now, obviously, this is a new one. Uh, it's working now. On the car, I would measure at least two temperatures, one kind of like cooler temperature, whatever that is in your country, and then one when the car is at operating temperature, and you see it on the screen where it should be, when the temperature of the car is around that 80, 85 degrees. The next sensor to talk about is this one right here. It's the instrument cluster reading sensor. This measures the coolant temperature and then sends the reading to your instrument cluster. To test this, you use a heat gun like this one. It's not perfect, but it works. You aim it at this point and then see what it says on the cluster. If it's, say, within plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius, then it's doing its job. If it's off by more than 10, then it's faulty. Sometimes, if it's not working, it could end up showing a red line in your cluster. You see the red spot there? When in fact, it's not. This sensor is here to inform the driver. This gauge is here to inform the driver of the engine's temperature. And that's it. It's important for the driver to be aware of any overheating situation. And I'll touch more upon that near the end of the video. Our last sensor is this blue sensor. Its main function is to help protect your air conditioning components. But it also offers extreme engine heating, engine overheating protection by forcing these auxiliary fans to turn on when the coolant temperature exceeds about 110 degrees Celsius. So imagine now... If the thermostat is broken and the instrument cluster isn't doing its job because it's faulty, it's the blue guy here 
who is the final defense before your engine blows. I made a whole video on the auxiliary fans and I cover this blue sensor in a lot of detail on how to test it. The video is in the video description. I highly recommend you watch it. It's popular and it's a well-liked video. So it sounds somewhat absurd that we have four sensors measuring the coolant temperature and each doing its own thing. Makes us wonder why the engineers just didn't make one sensor with a number of leads going to the various other parts of the car. But it's like this on purpose because if one sensor controlling all the items fails and that sensor breaks, you lose all the safety features. The four sensors each provide different safeties and different backups. So it's somewhat of a genius idea on why these cars have multiple coolant sensors. To my bonus section of this video, a logical question to ask, and I get this question a lot, is what is the ideal temperature for a late 80s or 90s Mercedes? Based on my knowledge of these cars is that under highway or autobahn driving, your instrument cluster should read somewhere between 85 and 90 degrees Celsius. Under extreme stop and go city traffic, and by this I mean traveling one to two kilometers or one mile every five minutes, we're talking real slow, you will see the temperature get as high as 100 degrees Celsius. I would only worry if it gets over 100 degrees, more like 105-ish. Obviously, the engineers designed the red line all the way up there to the 125, 130 degrees Celsius. So even at 100 degrees, it's still the range that the engineers consider to be okay. And it leaves a lot of room before engine damage. The bottom line is if your car's temperature approaches the 125, 130 range, that is when engine damage occurs. At that point, you need to pull your car over and let it cool and get it to safety. There are other areas to keep the car cool that I didn't touch upon, such as proper coolant, coolant level, and the viscose fan. On the screen, you'll see another video from the Handy Valve playlist, which has dozens of Mercedes videos. Please click on it. You'll like it as well. Bye for now, Handy Valve.